Did you know that electricity is everywhere? It's constantly flowing around us, from the light in your room to the signals your brain sends to move your fingers. But here's the twist. Those tiny particles that carry the electrical current move slower than light. So how does the signal itself travel almost at the speed of light? Could space actually be used for grounding? Ever wondered why we call those little power sources AAA batteries? What does the AAA actually stand for? Are there even any A or B batteries out there? Here's a real brain buster. Can our brain actually power a tiny LED light? And when it comes to our body's electrical signals, are they A, C, or DC? Do we even have a frequency? Let's go further back in time. Who built the first power plant? Was it Nikola Tesla or someone else? And here's the big question. Was it AC or DC power that lit the world? Let's unreveal all these mind-blowing questions together and discover the wonders of electricity. Stay with me, this is going to be fun. The history of power generation is a fascinating journey, filled with countless technological advancements and innovations. Over time, many brilliant minds have contributed to the development of the systems that bring electricity to our homes and industries today. But did you know when the first power plant was built? Yes, the first power plant was built on September 4, 1882. It was called the Pearl Street Station and was located in New York City. This was the first central power station that supplied electricity to homes and businesses, marking a significant milestone in the history of electricity generation. It was founded by Thomas Edison and was powered by direct current DC. This power plant had the capacity to generate 100 kilowatts of electricity, lighting up about 59 customers in lower Manhattan. All right, now let's dive into the next question. Did you know that electricity travels nearly at the speed of light? That's right. Electricity flows faster than a speeding bullet. But don't get confused. When we say electricity, we're talking about the movement of electrons, tiny particles that rush through conductors at incredible speeds, nearly reaching the speed of light. Now, speed is impressive, but how does electricity make its way through different materials? Is it faster in water or a metal conductor? Well, electricity travels faster in metal, like copper or aluminum because metals are great conductors. They allow electrons to flow freely with minimal resistance. In contrast, water, especially if it contains minerals or impurities, also conducts electricity, but much slower. So next time you're near a wire in water, be careful. You can get a shock. But wait, what if you were underground and there was a live electrical wire in the ground? Would you get shocked? Yes, you could. The earth is actually a conductor of electricity, especially when the soil is moist. So, if you're buried underground near a current, the electricity can flow through the ground and into your body. Definitely something to keep in mind if you're digging near power lines. As we know, transmission lines operate at high voltages to transfer electricity over long distances, but a significant amount of energy is lost as heat due to resistance. Now imagine a world where this loss doesn't exist. A world where electricity flows effortlessly, without any resistance, heating, or energy waste, even under high current and voltage. This is possible with superconductors, materials that, when cooled to extremely low temperatures, can carry electricity with zero resistance. Scientists are actively working to make this revolutionary technology a practical reality, promising unparalleled efficiency in power transmission. Let's dive into the electric fury of the sky, where lightning strikes with explosive power. Did you know that a single bolt of lightning can contain enough energy to power a 100-watt light bulb for three months? Now imagine if we could capture that lightning energy. Wouldn't that be a game changer for renewable energy? Now let's take a step outside Earth. What about the moon? Could it be used for grounding electricity? The short answer is, not really. The moon doesn't have the atmosphere or conductive properties that Earth does, so space doesn't have grounding in the traditional sense. So, if you were to touch a live wire on the moon, you wouldn't get a shock. But don't try this on Earth. It's a shocking bad idea. Now let's bring it back to us. Believe it or not, 
Your brain is constantly generating electricity. In fact, your brain produces about 20 watts of electricity, enough to power a small LED light. What happens if you touch something hot? Or when you experience an electric shock, your nerves send signals to your brain at speeds of up to 120 meters per second. Faster than most sports cars, but still much slower than electrical shock signals moves at nearly the speed of light. That's about 300,000 kilometers per second. In fact, nerve signals are about 2.5 million times slower than an electric signal in a wire or your body. So, when you get shocked, your muscles contract almost instantly because the electric signal moves so quickly. But your brain takes a tiny bit longer to process what's happening. That's why you might feel the pain after the shock has already occurred. Mind-blowing, isn't it? Our body is a powerhouse of electrical activity, from brain waves to muscle contractions. But have you ever wondered, does our body run on AC or DC? Surprisingly, it's all alternating current. The electrical signals in your body constantly switch direction, oscillating just like the AC power in your home. But here's something interesting. Do these signals have a frequency? Absolutely. Your body's electrical impulses operate at specific frequencies, shaping everything from your heartbeat to brain function. Now, let's analyze the frequency patterns produced by different parts of the body. The brain generates electrical signals that vary in frequency depending on your state of consciousness, and these brain waves are measured using an electroencephalogram, EEG. Heart activity can be measured using an electrocardiogram, ECG, with frequencies typically varying depending on the heart rate and the rhythms observed. Another device, electromyography, EMG, measures the electrical activity of muscles. When muscles contract, they generate electrical impulses, which typically vary based on the type of muscle activity. The skin also conducts electrical signals, and techniques like galvanic skin response, GSR, measure these low-frequency signals to assess emotional responses and stress levels. These methods, along with EEG and EMG, form the basis of a lie detector, known as a polygraph. Curious about how it works? Drop a comment, and I'll make a dedicated video on it. Now let's dive into our final topic, batteries. You've probably used AAA batteries countless times, but have you ever wondered what AAA stands for? Surprisingly, it doesn't stand for anything. It's simply a label indicating the battery size. The same goes for C, D, and AA batteries. They're named based on their dimensions, not their chemical composition. So next time someone asks, you'll know the secret and maybe even test your friends with the question. So, whether it's the speed of electricity, the mysteries of superconductors, or the vital role electricity plays in our very survival, one thing is clear. Electricity is far more than just a convenience. It's a force of nature, a life-sustaining energy, and a constant companion in our everyday lives. Thanks for joining me on this electrifying journey. If you learned something new today, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with someone who's fascinated by the power of electricity. Drop your thoughts or questions in the comments. I'd love to hear what surprised you the most.